month. And that's the latest from BBC Sport. Goodbye. Hello and welcome back to BBC News. I'm Marianne Mashiri. The Bank of England is expected to announce another rise in the cost of borrowing at noon. The rise would be the 13th in a row by the bank's Monetary Policy Committee and is in response to stubbornly high inflation. Now, inflation, which measures the pace prices rise at, stayed at 8.7% in the month of May. That's the same as in April. Many analysts and economists had expected or at least hoped that it may have fallen to around 8.5%, but it didn't. And one of the problems we have with inflation is core inflation is still very high in the UK. Well, there have been hope that uh, prices may have come down and the bank's remit, remember, is to keep inflation at 2%. So 8.7% is way, way above the bank's target. Well, the news, if it does happen, would come as a blow to many uh, mortgage holders who could see their monthly repayments rise with the cost of borrowing. Well, let's bring in our personal finance correspondent, Kevin Peachy, who is in the business newsroom for us now. And Kevin, uh, let's talk first of all about the, the bank in terms of what it has left in its arsenal to deal with inflation. Because the disappointing fact is for many economists that inflation didn't fall as some had hoped and predicted it would do in May. Why is that? Oh, Daniel, let me just stop you one second for one second there, because I think in a couple of minutes we're going to, in a couple of seconds we're going to be able to Welcome to our international audience on BBC News. We're just having a discussion with Daniel and Diane about the cost of borrowing uh, in the UK. And Daniel was just about to answer to me what the high interest rate in the UK is doing to his life. Daniel, keep going. Sorry about that. We haven't had it yet, but it will happen in the next few seconds. Um, Let's at this point bring in Mohammed al Aryan, who is Chief Economic Advisor at Allianz. Thank you so much for joining us. We're still waiting for the Bank of England to, uh, oh, here we go. We're getting, okay, so we've had a 0.5 rise in the cost of borrowing, 0.5% rise in the cost of borrowing, Mohammed, from the Bank of England, which takes rates uh, in the UK to 5%. Uh, Mohammed, uh, I hope you're there with me and I wanted to get your reaction to this. Faisal, thank you very much indeed for that. Faisal Islam there, our, our economics editor. We've had a number of uh, lines coming into us from the UK Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. He said that high inflation is the greatest immediate economic challenge that we must address. He's also gone on to say that the Bank of England has my full support as you take action to return inflation to its target through your independent monetary policy decisions. The emphasis there clearly on independent. And the households and businesses should not should be in no doubt that we will act together to bring inflation under control. Well, let's bring in our cost of living correspondent, Kevin Peachy, who is in the uh, business unit here, in the money and work unit in the, in the BBC. And I wanted to bring you in here just to talk about this because households and businesses they're the ones who are going to be looking at this many of them not all of them because not everyone has a mortgage it's important to underline and worrying about how they're going to make ends meet as this squeeze continues on their finances okay well listen diane park and daniel peace it's been really good to get you on the program to give your uh, point of view often we talk about these broader economic issues but don't actually talk about how they impact real people so thank you once again for taking the time to speak to us around the world and across the UK, you're watching BBC News. You're live with BBC News. I'm Marianne Mashiri. Well, let's return to that breaking news story now. The Bank of England has announced it's increasing its main interest rate by half a percentage point in the UK to 5%. It's the 13th increase in a row as the bank attempts to tackle high inflation. Figures released on Wednesday show that last month inflation in the UK didn't fall as was predicted by many economists. So what does this mean politically? Let's cross live now to Nick Hurdley, who is our political correspondent in Westminster. And Nick, we heard a short while ago a couple of lines coming into us from the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. Um, but also talk us through uh, what the opposition Labour Party are saying in terms of their ideas to combat inflation. But for now, I want to take you somewhere else and bring you some other news. A man has been shot dead and several wounded after Israeli settlers attacked Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. The violence happened in the town of Tur Musaya. 
Well, let's cross live now to our Middle East correspondent, Tom Bateman, who is there with the very latest. And Tom, bring us up to date with what's been happening. OK, Tom, thank you very much indeed for that update, Tom Bateman there. Um, before I go, I just want to flag to you that if you're wondering why we haven't covered the story of the submersible uh, and the search which continues for it. We are going to do that in a moment or two. We're going to have a special Your Questions Answer program. We'll be talking uh, to a number of uh, guests uh, uh, about the submersible and about the latest in the search for it. As you know, a French vessel with uh, its own submersible capable of reaching those distances has arrived and is going to start its search soon. We'll have all your questions answered here on BBC News in just a few minutes' time. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. I'm back in a few minutes uh, with that. More vessels joined the search for the submersible on the east coast of Canada. It went missing on a trip to see the wreck of the Titanic. Well, the search area is expanded as the Coast Guard says it is in a race against time to find the vessel. The effort is international with various countries providing support. Hello and a very warm welcome to this special edition of Your Questions Answered. I'm Marianne Mashiri. Today we're going to be bringing you more on the tourist submersible missing near the wreck of the Titanic in the North Atlantic. Now, as you may know already, search efforts have entered a critical phase. Salvage work must start within hours as the oxygen supply of the five men on board is running out. The US Coast Guard has doubled the search area. A French ship has arrived to assist with search and rescue efforts. That ship contains a robot which can reach the seabed nearly four kilometres down. Well, joining me now is our BBC science editor, Jonathan Amos, Ryan Ramsey, former submarine captain in the Royal Navy, and Dr Simon Boxall, senior lecturer in oceanography at the University of Southampton. Thank you to all of you for joining me and for taking the time to speak to us and to answer questions from viewers. And you've been asking a lot of questions, a lot of interest clearly in this story. So let's get started. Uh, the first question is, what is the radius of the search operation with respect to the point where Titanic sits? What's the radius of the search operation? That is from Anis in Islamabad. Jonathan, do you want to take that first? Uh, yeah. I'm OK, we're going to take a very short break now uh, for viewers. We're back, though, in a minute or so around the world and across the UK. You're watching BBC News. Welcome back to this special edition of Your Questions Answered. I'm Marianne Mashiri. Today we're looking at the submersible, the vessel which now has launched a uh, search and rescue operation in the North Atlantic uh, with five people on board. Time is running out as there is a belief that oxygen levels within that vessel are starting to dwindle as we speak. Uh, well, I have uh, some guests here, some experts with me today. I'm joined by the BBC Science Editor, Jonathan Amos, Ryan Ramsey, former submarine captain with the Royal Navy and Dr Simon Boxall, Senior Lecturer in Oceanography at the University of Southampton. Thank you once again to all of you for joining me. We've had so many questions from viewers uh, today on this subject. It's uh, it's something that interests a lot of people. I guess it's very fascinating. People uh, are equally fascinated and terrified uh, by what the people in that submersible must be going through. Uh, we'll go to question five now and this uh, is uh, a question that we have, oh, very small writing there at the bottom, but I can see that it says, is it not possible to fit a tracking device on the Titan? Can GPS get a signal from deep water? That's an interesting one. And Ryan, I think I'll take that one to you first. OK, Jonathan Amos, our science editor, Ryan Ramsey, former submarine captain with the Royal Navy and Dr. Simon Boxall, the lecturer in oceanography at the University of Southampton. I thank all of you uh, for taking the time to answer viewer questions. And of course, as always, uh, your questions answered could not happen without you, the viewers at home, who've been sending us uh, lots and lots of questions. I hope we've answered as many of them uh, as is possible. If you have any more, of course, as always, do write to us here at the BBC or go to our website or the BBC News app. But from me and the team, thank you for watching. Bye bye.
Live from London, this is BBC News. More vessels join the search for the submersible missing on a trip to see the wreck of the Titanic. Well, the search area is expanded as the Coast Guard says it's in a race against time to find the vessel. The Bank of England raises UK interest rates again by half a percentage point. They now stand at 5%. World leaders gather in Paris for talks on helping poorer countries hit by climate change. Hello, I'm Marianne Mashiri. Welcome to BBC News Now. We start in the North Atlantic, where fears are growing for the five people on board the missing sub, which lost contact during a descent to the wreck of the Titanic. Well, air on board is forecast to run out today, and it comes as the French research ship reached the search area. That's equipped with a robotic craft capable of reaching depths of 12,500 feet, which is where the sub could be lying. Our correspondent Jessica Parker sent this report from Boston, where the rescue effort is being coordinated. Nick Hurdley, thank you very much indeed, Nick, there uh, in Westminster for us. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Hello, you're live with BBC News. I'm Mariam Mashiri. World leaders are in Paris for talks aimed at tackling poverty and climate change. Some 40 leaders are taking part. The negotiations are aimed at boosting finance for lower income countries. Debt repayments and changes to lending agreements are under discussion. There was this poignant moment as the talks got underway from youth climate activist Vanessa Nakate. She led a moment of silence for all victims of climate change. Well, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, joined the calls for urgent action. Steve Rosenberg there. Now, a pilot and some passenger have had a lucky escape after their plane crashed into a residential street in the US state of Wisconsin. Police said the pilot reportedly had engine problems and avoided homes before trying to crash land the aircraft. Well, he managed to land the plane and only damaged one van on the street. The two people on board suffered minor injuries, but no one on the ground was hurt. A lucky escape for all, I think. You're watching BBC News. Stay with us on the BBC. This is BBC News. I'm Mariam Mashiri, and these are the latest headlines. More vessels join the search for the submersible missing on a trip to see the wreck of the Titanic. The search area is expanded as the Coast Guard says it's in a race against time to find the vessel. The Bank of England raises UK interest rates again by half a percentage point this time. They now stand at 5%. Well, more now on our top story and fears are growing for the five people on board the missing sub which lost contact during a descent to the wreck of the Titanic. The oxygen on board was feared to run out today. Well, one of the robot submarines searching for the Titan is the French craft Victor 6000. Our correspondent Lorna Gordon visited La Seine-sur-Mer where the Victor 6000 robot is usually based to take a closer look at a similar vessel called the Nautil. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with me, Marianne Mashiri, on BBC News Now. More now on the news in the UK that the Bank of England has raised interest rates by half a percentage point to 5%. That's the highest rate for 15 years. It means higher monthly payments for around one and a half million people uh, with mortgages that track the rate, uh, as well as those about to remortgage. So what can those affected do about this? Our cost of living correspondent Coletta Smith has been finding out. I think if gaming has a message, then it's going to be a good thing, can't it? You're watching BBC News. Stay with us here on the BBC. I'm Marianne Mashiri. Bye bye for now.
Live from London, this is BBC News. The Bank of England raises UK interest rates again by half a percentage point to 5%. Concerns grow for the five people on board the submersible missing on a trip to see the wreck of the Titanic. The US Coast Guard insists it remains focused on rescuing the crew alive. World leaders are in Paris for talks on helping poorer countries hit by climate change. Hello, I'm Marianne Mashiri. A very warm welcome to this edition of BBC News Now. We start in the UK, where the Bank of England has put up interest rates by half a percentage point to 5%. That's the highest rate for 15 years. The Bank of England, one of many central banks around the world tackling high inflation, is hoping that the increase will curb rising prices. But it also means more pain for many mortgage holders, as Andy Verity reports. Nick, thank you very much indeed. Across the UK, you're watching BBC News. Let's take a look at some other stories now making news across the UK. The search for a 42-year-old firefighter missing one on a charity swim across the English Channel has been called off. Ian Hughes from Dudley started the solo challenge with a support boat on Tuesday from Dover before disappearing. Mr Hughes had been aiming to raise £21,000 for the British Heart Foundation, Midlands Air Ambulance and Firefighters Charity. An annual survey from the Higher Education Policy Institute has found that more university students in the UK are being paid or working a paid job alongside their studies. Research suggests 55% of students are now doing paid work compared with a total of 45% of them 12 months ago. In the survey of more than 10,000 students, 76% also said the cost of living has had a negative impact on their studies. The Defence Secretary Ben Wallace, who had been seeking to become the next head of NATO, appears to have ruled himself out. Mr Wallace told The Economist magazine that he now wasn't going to get the job in the face of American pressure for the current Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg to remain in his post at NATO. Around the world and across the UK, I'm Marianne Mashiri and welcome back to uh, BBC News. Fears are growing for the five people on board the missing submersible which lost contact during a descent to the wreck of the Titanic. It's thought the oxygen supply on board may run out today, but the US Coast Guard insists it remains focused on rescuing those crew members alive. The search area has now been doubled in size and a French ship with a robot that can reach the seabed is on site. Our correspondent Jessica Parker sent this report from Boston where the rescue effort is being coordinated. Amazing, oh, beautiful, go. beautiful voices and beautiful people, both of you. I'm so happy to have got you on the program. Um, Alison and Ronald, good Thank luck, you. have a great day. Enjoy everything that's going on down in Windrush Ware in Brixton. And to okay, all of you watching you so at home, yeah. thank you for joining me here on BBC News Now. Uh, we have business in a few minutes, don't go anywhere. Hello, you're watching BBC News. We're now going to take you to the UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, who is about uh, to give a speech uh, in Kent. I think once the mic is handed over to him, we can hear him speak. It's an important day, of course, today, because today uh, is Bank of England interest rate day and the bank has raised the cost of borrowing. Uh, let's have a listen to what Rishi Sunak has to say and whether he references what's happened today in terms of the economy. This is what an incredible place. So congratulations for all working here and thank you for having me. It's 